Hello friends, Heather here from Collective Rising. Welcome back to my channel. Today's session is a rather interesting one and I thought I would um, do it sooner rather than later because a lot of people are interested uh, in this topic. It kind of comes up a lot in, uh, in my teacher trainings and in various spiritual mentorship courses that I do. So a lot of people ask questions related to this particular topic. Uh, so today's topic will be about the relationship between uh, mind, body and emotions. Okay, In yoga science, these bodies are known as kosha. Kosha is the uh, layer, a layer or a sheath. Uh, so yoga recognizes there are five bodies that, uh, that form the layers of the Atman, the soul. We are going to particularly talk about three layers today and they are the mind, the emotional body, uh, the pranic body or the vital force uh, body and the physical body which is the external layer. Uh, there has been a rising interest in the recent years of um, a lot of scientists and uh, a lot of um, researchers have been looking into the connection between how we think and the state of our mind, the state of our body. Um, and how they directly correlate with each other, how they uh, intermingle, how they interconnect. What we think initially becomes a sort of, if it's repetitive, it becomes habit and a habit or habits are unconscious and they, um, if they're repetitive and ongoing and remain unconscious, they start to form our identity uh, and then that identity becomes our character our character becomes the, um, you know, forms our paradigms and the paradigms become our reality. Our reality is based on what decisions we've taken at the very start and we've left it and left it to sort of build up and become our, our reality. So our, our decision-making process, our choices, our free will, um, they sort of all um, go in hand in hand and everything together sort of creates that um, end result. Let's first start with understanding what these layers are. So the first one is the Manamaya Kosha and this is the mental body and it is the third layer um, of the Atma. So this, uh, this is concerned with our mental processes and conscious, subconscious, superconscious mind. Uh, when we look at this body, that's directly correlated with uh, all the um, ideas, beliefs, system of beliefs that we have been conditioned. You know, it's not all conditioning. Some of it is yes by, by choice but most of it is conditioning. So from a very young age, we're conditioned to think a certain way, believe in a certain uh, a system, uh, whether, it be, whether it's um, religious or a social construct, a model, a social model, traditions, uh, uh, these sort of things that uh, sort of um, keep you uh, entrapped in a particular model of uh, society. Uh, so, that kind of falls under Manamaya Kosha and how we relate with that, it's all very personal. So it differs from one person to another. For example, two uh, siblings might be brought up in the exact same way, under the exact same conditions, exposed to the exact same teachings, but both would develop a different uh, perspective in regards to religion, for example, or, um, or society or culture. So that's a, a very, very personal, um, personal perspective. Okay, but generally speaking, uh, what we learn in the young, uh, when we're children, is usually the system that we adopt m most of the time. Um, so this is our Manamaya Kosha. It's not just the, un the conscious beliefs, but also the unconscious ones. So anything that has become a habit has become person personified. So anything that's has become part of our personality, consciously or unconsciously, is uh, manifest into through the mind and um, becomes a ideas or projections we have to really re-examine those ideas every now and then and re-evaluate where we stand with our belief system whether it's helpful whether it's um, something that um, 
is constructive, uh, helping us into our essential spiritual ascension journey, or it's taking us back, or, or keeping us stuck in um, in 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 fear, or um, you know, feeling powerless. So we really need to always revisit the Manamaya Kosha, which is the mind. We need to delve into the subconscious part of the brain in order to heal anything that does not resonate with our soul especially that our belief system is um can be changed it's always in, in fact in every phase of our lives we do it unconsciously we reevaluate what we've learned so most people will do that some people will remain with the same old belief system that we brought up with but a lot of people will undergo a reevaluation every every juncture every phase of their um adult life and um come come up with a different conclusion so it's something that's always changeable okay it's not always a fixed fixed ideals then we have the pranamaya kosha, which is uh, the vital force energy, and that consists of our the five values. So the the five um, airs. Uh, that's a very technical uh, sort of um, explanation. So I won't go through that. But essentially, it is the vital force energy that runs the body. So it is the prana. Uh, it is the you know the breath that link between the physical and the metaphysical uh, it is anything to do with our um, also a little bit to do with our emotional body so our energy flows through what we call the nadis or the rivers the nadi system through the body we have 72,000 nadis so if you look at the body on the inside it looks uh, it resembles a map uh, it can be very detailed, but um, essentially we have seven uh, essential vortices or, or energy uh, wheels or chakras, and uh, these lay um, in the second layer. So they're um, hypothetical, but they also are directly connected with the physical body and have a very, very important role to play as far as our uh, psychology and our physical state as well is concerned. And then we have the physical layer, which obviously is the layer that you see with the naked eyes, and it's your body, it's your flesh, it's your um, your systems, 11 systems, and it's nourished with food and water and oxygen. and. Um, that is the external layer, the first layer that you see, everyone sees with the naked eyes. Uh, so the connection is between the three layers is that in a state of dis this will directly impact the prana, the vital force energy, which will create blocks in our energetic system that will lead to physical disease. Okay, so it's it is said that most of the physical disease or disease comes from the mind first it originates in the mind that's an amazing uh finding because we think um most of us think that everything is purely physical right um and that's not the case so 95 percent um that's what i've what i've read um originates in the mind my mind is at the level say for example of fear that's what's happening in my mind my body is going to go or be steered in that direction of attracting more fear events that will trigger the fear in me okay or might be in the process of learning and therefore I would either I'd be given the free will uh, to choose whether I want to use that free will to overcome fear or to delve deeper into that state of fear either way i am faced with situations that expose me to these uh these sort of triggers these catalysts right so um it is true what they say that what we think we attract everything is energy it's a law of attraction okay it's a law of attraction so what goes on in the mind essentially is going to bring you either closer to that thing that you want that you really want or farther away from it okay and of course we have a free will 
we are given a free will uh, no doubt about about that and it's up to us to exercise that free will the way we feel it fits or resonates with our soul so it's totally and completely and utterly up to us how we want to use the our free will okay that's a more empowered view is to say i am a free uh, uh free i have free will and i will choose my um i'll choose the outcome i will manifest the outcome that i desire i create my own reality as opposed to the disempowered view of this is my reality there is no other way i am a victim of my cons or the consequences i am a victim of uh the events that are happening in my life and i feel stuck as opposed to i feel free to change the outcome now what is the connection between the emotions the physical body and the uh the the emotions the physical body and the mind okay we're going to have a look at what unresolved conflict can do to the body okay so i'm just going to give you a few examples if for example we um we have issues in our thyroid right the thyroid is linked to the vishuddhi chakra vishuddhi chakra is the chakra that uh, is directly concerned with uh, freedom to express ourselves um, to stand in our truth to speak truthfully and to communicate with others ability to listen and to express ourselves right so say we have a, a bit of a blockage or a severe blockage um, we call it disharmony disharmony in our vishuddhi chakra what tends to happen is physically if and that's if it remains un, unhealed physically uh, that uh, thyroid issue will become um, a bit of a systematic problem okay in in terms of um, hormone secretion okay and we might feel a little bit um, physically drained tired or powerless okay so emotionally we will feel powerless and that's because of the blockage in the energy center in the throat okay so there is a direct connection here between how we're feeling in the mind drained and powerless to how we're feeling in the body fatigued and tired and how we're feeling and how what's happening in the Vishuddhi chakra or the energy center which is a blockage of energy of unhealed uh, trauma or um, suppressed emotions or unresolved conflict so something might have happened when we were growing up that uh, sort of made us suppress our emotions and not be able to voice or express how we feel about them and hence that when we've become when we've um, not become aware of them we've suppressed them and it's become an unconscious um, it's become an unconscious thing that we have not been um, sort of we didn't diagnose it early enough just let it sit there and sort of not recognize it haven't done any real shadow work any uh, healing work on ourselves and it's just remained there for a very long time and it's uh the result of that is a complete block or a partial block and it's caused us problems physically another thing is uh another example is for uh, is, is um really affects really affects our vital organs they can be quite um they can be quite problematic uh, for example abandonment Okay, when we feel abandoned during childhood, abandonment is something that the mind sort of um, uh, starts with the mind, okay, because abandonment is being left alone, uncared for, um, in some cases unnurtured, unloved. And so that sense of abandonment is going to trigger certain emotions, for example, I am not worthy of self of love. I'm not worthy of being given care. I am a nobody. Okay, so it's a lack of self worth, and so that directly affects the pancreas. Uh, so 
any type of family conflict any type of abandonment is going to lead to anger frustration and it's going to affect the pancreas um, so there's a lot of examples uh, not wanting to live not wanting to live people who just don't have the uh, the the will to be alive anymore so a lot of um, trauma things happening just you know overall not being able to handle living in this life and what's going on at the moment yeah it's really really challenging so if we're feeling that way rather than empowered to make a change we're kind of giving up on life but from on the inside uh, that directly affects the kidneys okay so you're going to start to feel like your body is holding water it is retaining water okay so kidney problems directly correlated by not wanting to be here not wanting to be alive we come up to the breast women breast so if it's on the right side it is usually a conflict with a partner or with other people if it's on the left it's with a it's a, it's a home it's a mother or it's a child uh, uh, testes and ovaries is conflict in a conflict or loss adrenal cortex okay the adrenal cortex is when we feel lost when we lack a sense of coherence or a sense of direction in life uh, that affects the adrenal glands or the adrenal cortex the bladder the bladder is uh, holds a water element right and so anything that uh, is not pure in life like if we are in shame or if we are doing things that we know we shouldn't be doing can affect the bladder if there is conflict an ugly form of conflict a real form of conflict with a family member friends or someone we closely relate with uh, that can affect the the bladder severely um, the another one is uh, bones some people have problem in their bones uh, some have real severe bone pain and uh, a lot of people just have um, just a little bit of niggly joint pain and um, things like that now if we rule out the physical like a physical injury that's uh, something that would have happened due to a fall or an accident so if we rule that out and that pain starts to sort of escalate and for no apparent reason um, you can almost guarantee it's it's connected to uh, some unresolved emotional conflict that's been repressed uh, hate anger resentment and or a, um, a complicated for example grief, uh, complicated grief are these uh, usually what tends to happen uh, so with with bones it's normally a lack of self-worth so for example that child that's been abandoned that feel like they didn't deserve to be loved cared for and nurtured uh, they end up having a lack of self-worth okay and their bones start to ache for no reason for no apparent reason uh, almost always there is an emotional connection okay like I said these koshas these uh, layers that surround the Atman the very central core uh, aspect of our beingness okay whether you want to call it a soul a spirit a consciousness a essential energy a God whatever you would like to call it it's essentially the same thing it's that inner flame that driving force that drives our physical bodies our vehicles our, our external vehicle and that external vehicle is not just bones and, and 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 flesh and skin and you know eyes and ears and all the external senses it is also uh, the the prana the life force energy the the mind of course the mind but there's many layers to the mind as well the intellect uh, and there's something called the blissful body as well so that's when we go into transcendental states where we uh, transcend or bypass the mind into a more higher dimension okay and uh, it's called blissful body or anandamaya kosha 
so um, okay so back to that I'm going to give you a few more examples because uh, these examples might help you to work out what is happening in your own uh, mind body construct um, another one is heart so if you're having heart palpitations or some unresolved heart issues that your cardiologist can't seem to pinpoint to anything physical rule out anything physical um, then you can almost guarantee that it is connected to your emotions and uh, we've um, it's it's been recognized that this emotion is unresolved conflict so it is a constant conflict with other people so constant um, or perpetual uh, you know um, upset so always being upset with other people or always being disappointed or dismay or um, in negative state of mind so anything that takes away that joy from your life and don't forget that we we have a choice we can be in a state of joy or we can be in a state of upset and grief and constant dismay so it's our choice completely our choice it's it's uh, us who decide whether we want to see life from the perspective of a of a, a victim or from uh, uh, an empowered more empowered um, you know we we create our own reality so a co-creator okay uh, so we always have a choice to may not be able to remove the cause of, of um, what's making you upset okay you may not be able to remove every conflicting situation um, but it's up to us to decide how we want to respond to the person or the situation that's entirely up to us and how much we take in how much we're affected by it it's also our choice okay it takes some practice but ultimately we choose how much we want to take in this is a container we put in our container how much you know if we're filling it up with um, liquid with water we choose how much water goes in that container we choose how much to give out of that container okay so you know it's it's really entirely up to us okay um, things that for example affect the ears the ear canals and um, people would get a lot of infections they might be in conflict as in um, they're hearing things that they don't resonate with all the time or they're not getting the information that they are set out to get so if they want to get information uh, that they deem helpful for them or necessary for them and they're not able to get that they will be in a constant uh, or perpetual inner conflict and um, I have to point out here that this has to be an ongoing thing so if it's just a one-off it's effect uh, yeah, it's not really that big but if it's an ongoing thing especially from childhood and especially when we're not aware of what's happening then it's going to leave a big impact okay so ears usually uh, are because we're either receiving or hearing things that we, we deem unpleasant and not helpful unhelpful or we are not getting uh, the information that we seek out okay and uh, we seek to get uh, if we're having experiencing tummy pains or intestinal pain any intestinal issue it is because of um, undigested or indigestible amount of a big chunk of anger so when we are angry all the time and we don't know how to channel these uh, emotions of anger what to do with our anger it just sort of sits in our lower region of the stomach in the intestines and it affects our intestinal uh, organs and the colons and we might develop problems such as um, either loose bowels or, or constipation or pain or all of the above so yeah indigestible anger is um, anger is a real prime emotion a primary emotion uh, that can lead to a lot of problems because anger is usually because of 
pain. So the root cause of anger is always pain. So we want to, if we feel that we're getting angry, we want to go into the root of the problem and really uh, try and find the root cause of the pain. And this is how we heal. Instead of just looking at how to channel the anger, we want to look at what is the cause of the anger in the first place. Okay. Um, brain tumor. Brain tumor is linked to stubbornness. A person who is um, very rarely changes their mind about even when presented with uh, with facts. They tend to stick to their point of view, always the right point of view. Uh, someone who refuses to change old patterns, uh, old patterns of behavior, old patterns of system of belief, they stick to the same old system of beliefs and they will never ever change. That can be a cause for mental frustration. Um, it can be in a state of mental dissonance where they um, they sort of see reality uh, only from a very limited perspective uh, and they refuse to believe otherwise even when presented with facts so it's always uh, sort of yeah um, let's just say a limited view of a limited perspective of the world so they uh, are very high um, high uh, conflict uh, areas so heart and brain um, and so mental or not mental so brain tumors can be directly connected to that um, what I've just mentioned now um, cervix is a severe frustration so if we're having any cervical cervical issues not cervical as in spine but cervical issues uh, that can be directly correlated with um, yeah, severe frustration. So, yeah, we, a lot of it's we have to recognize and we have to heal, we have to deal with it before it erupts, before it becomes something too big for us to be able to uh, dismantle. Uh, so, yeah, um, be honest with yourself. When you are doing shadow work and looking at the dark side of ourselves and we call this shadow work because it examines those things that nobody ever wants to go there for um, or even take a look at because who wants to be confronted with the truth and the truth is painful all of us all of us um, guaranteed try to escape that process or as a minimum delay that process so we don't have to be confronted with um, these hard truths so but the sooner we do it the better because when we do it soon enough we we can heal soon enough and we can enjoy life sooner than later so um, always look at these things before it becomes a real big uh, burden in your life okay so um, another one is fear and conflict of fear and fright can cause problems in the larynx like esophagus cannot have it or swallow it so something that we've got resistance to swallow or have uh, even if it's a truth pill um, can cause esophageal problems so if you've heard of what's the esophageal tumor or cancer you might have to look at the unresolved emotions there what are we resisting in life what are we holding on to that we can't take in um, like I said, it doesn't just isn't just related to food. It can, it can be a piece of knowledge or or something that um, constantly resisting um, that can create blocks and therefore manifest into some form of cancer or um, yeah, yeah something else that would just present itself here in this particular region. Uh, not necessarily cancer. It can be. Um, it can be something else it can be a growth but non-cancerous as well so benign or um, it could be just um, you know blocks or could be infections or inflammation so it's a number of things it doesn't necessarily be um, have to be cancerous um, okay another one is liver liver is a big one so liver is fear of starvation when we are worried about the future 
we've been worried about money and security and hence starvation so when when we're living in scarcity or poverty and we fear that one day we will starve that can affect our liver um, lymph glands the lymphatic glands is a, um, a loss of self-worth associated with the location um, melanoma feeling defiled so melanoma is feeling defiled soiled or feeling dirty uh, what else rectum fear of being useless okay fear of not being productive not being highly regarded in society um, yeah rectum who said who can sort of make that connection is very hard to even make that connection but there you go it's their uh, skin less of sorry uh, loss of integrity um, skin skin problems loss of integrity spleen shock of being physically or emotionally wounded okay uh, stomach digestible anger or swallowing too much anger um, what else haven't I covered? So there's a big list here that I've made. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I haven't covered. Anyway, this is not a conclusive list. There's a whole lot more, but hopefully I have covered uh, the main ones. Um, so I'm just going to end my video here and uh, just make a final note that um, I think I've already made a note before, I've already mentioned this, um, to heal and to resolve that conflict as early as possible, preferably as soon as you become aware of it. You may ask, how do I become aware of it? Well, if you're noticing that there's something consistently there in your body that's unexplained, uh, you're noticing something different, something change. And for example, your skin just suddenly erupt out of nowhere um, or even if it's a long-term problem that you've always had but your physicians your uh, your doctors your naturopaths your uh, physical therapist um, even you unable to sort of um, diagnose that or heal it or know its origins and nothing seems to work You've tried all these um, herbs concoctions and remedies and nothing seems to heal it then you need to look at the emotional source so always look at things that are emerging whether it's physical or non-physical sometimes it's a character change as well so you need to be uh, in tune with yourself as well have a good insight have an ability to discern certain situations so um, if for example you, um, you you've always been a happy cheerful bubbly person and all of a sudden you're feeling down um, and um, it's like someone stripped the, the joy out of your life you need to look at the emotional cause for that what could have happened if there's no immediate uh, sort of direct uh, reason that has caused this to happen you can go back maybe it's a past trauma or a past event that has come up so there has been some triggers that has brought up these past emotions that are coming up to the surface when they come up it's not a bad thing don't try and suppress them or repress them you need to deal with them before they become a big physical um, issue um, so don't be scared to do this work i promise it's it's a very very rewarding uh process to go through at the start it may seem like it's a um, somewhat self-destructive uh, like you've just embarked on a self-destructive journey uh, because it just seems all too much too depressing and too many things are coming up all at once but what you're doing is you're emptying and when you while you're emptying all the emotions that are in the very depth of that container are coming up to the surface right so it's like a bubbles forming bubbles and if you look at it from the top it may look like too scary too many ripples and you may not be able to handle all that at once but what's happening is things are clearing up 
once these bubbles uh, settle down and um, disperse then you will end up with a beautiful clear um, calm surface and this is what we are hoping to do through the process of self-healing cleansing purifying um, we are undergoing a massive massive change we are still the person we are but we are removing all these layers or veils that prevent us from seeing our true nature our true nature is beautiful our true nature is Satchitananda, consciousness, truth, and uh, uh, Ananda, bliss. This is our true nature. If you feel like you, um, your emotions, if you feel your, 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 your mind, your thoughts, your successes and failures, um, the things that people tell you you are and you identify with them things are bound to keep you stuck in the realm of illusion and suffering and sorrow the only way to emerge out of that is recognize you are not the mind the body you are not your emotions your thoughts you are not your ego you are not your achievements your successes your failures even though there's no such thing as success and failure so you are not any of these you are not even your body you are the creative intelligence beyond all this you are directly connected with the god source you are a co-creator okay you are sat chit ananda okay you are consciousness you are truth you are purity you are bliss this is your true nature once you remove all these uh, the murky water the murky water the, the the once it's purified you will have a better a much more clearer view of who you really are a clearer perspective a real real strong um uh, a belief that you are exactly the same uh, the same from the same source as everybody else hence there is no division so you won't see that um, you won't identify with the ego portion of yourself anymore because you see everyone else as a um, fragment of God or as a part and parcel of this one big beautiful uh, intelligent universe uh, so yes it is a matter of changing perspective and not being stuck in that um, same system of beliefs that we've been or generally and not to be too um, stereotypical but um, over the past 100 years especially we've been conditioned to think that we are powerless uh, we are uh, we need to depend on the system to find happiness and um, we are you know in a constant state of scarcity and that's a natural thing to be in a state of scarcity this is all wrong we are already born abundant we are born at the level of uh, love because we are love and then what way we choose to go okay, to elevate to stay at love is a good thing but to go back and drown into misery and suffering and sorrow and fear this is disempowerment so i hope this sort of video introduces you to the concept of the uh, layers of the soul so um the koshas but i haven't delved really deep into it today because it is just an introduction but i hope it gave you good insight into something that you may be experiencing and that motivates you to look deeper and research more deeply into this um this interesting topic um, okay, I will leave you with this and um, we'll see you next time. Namaste.